Hey everybody, so today I'm going to do a video about all of those little extra things that I add to my eyeshadow. Um, I think I might call it like embellishments or extras or you know what, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, so what that's going to include will be um, under eyeshadow inner corner colors because when you highlight the inner corner it makes your eye look more open and I usually highlight the brow bone here I think I might do eyebrows again in this video as well because I kind of lately have started doing my eyebrows before I highlight that brow bone there because it's just a little bit easier and of course, if you know me, it's going to have to be glitter because I just have to have it. Um, and I guess probably as well, a little bit of eyeliner and some eyelashes. So probably my next thing that I'm up to doing right now would be some glitter. So I'm just going to run off and grab the glitter that I'm going to use and some glitter adhesive and I'll be back in a moment. Okay guys, so I've got everything that I need which I'll show you just so that you know what I'm using. I've got a little tube of glitter adhesive. There's lots of these around. I prefer a particular one just because I've found in the past that it's not runny and it's like it doesn't take an eternity to tack off and stick so this is the one I prefer if you want to know what this one is just leave me a comment and I'll get back to you so when I'm squeezing out the glitter adhesive I actually got this as a part of my professional makeup kit when I started the makeup artistry course it's a palette. Now what these are used for is mixing colors of foundation and stuff like that on it. I also use it for my foundation because you need to kind of warm up the foundation before you put it on your face. So I use it for that. And I also just squeeze the glitter adhesive out on here because it just like it saves on mess and then you're not getting it everywhere. So there's that. I've just got a small brush that I use to apply the glitter adhesive where I want it. This is actually a small foam smudger, but what I use it for is I just use it to pick the glitter up and apply, just because it's a lot easier. When I first started using glitter, I used to do it with my fingers, but you end up making a real mess out of the eyeshadow that you've already done and then you have to try and reapply it over glitter adhesive and it just doesn't really work. And of course I've got glitter. Now I've picked like an iridescent purple. These glitters are not specifically makeup glitters. I just got them in a pack at a craft shop or a cheap shop or Kmart or something like that. And you know what, they do the job. So you don't have to have special makeup glitter. I think I got these for like $5 and there was about 20 in there. So, you know, who cares? Anyway, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to squeeze some glitter adhesive onto my palette. And you can always add more if you need to, but I'm just going to squeeze a little bit because otherwise it just gets wasted. And then you've got to clean the palette off so that there's not big globs of dried glue on there. Now where do I think I'd like to have some glitter today? Okay, lately I've been doing like a little cluster here and there and, and just here because usually when you use odd numbers of things it's more aesthetically appealing. So I'm just gonna, I'm just kind of, I'm dabbing the brush in but I'm just kind of pulling the glue out a little bit so it's not quite so thick 
on the brush so I don't get like a big blob in one area and I'm just kind of I'm just gently just dabbing it on not too hard because sometimes you can like I don't know how to explain it but you can like okay I've just had a brain blank Please wait while we reboot. Anyway, you can kind of ruin the good work that you've done on your eyeshadow there. And, and that makes me really sad. So we're not going to do that. So I'm just, I've got my little um, sponge smudger thing. And I'm just like dabbing it into the glitter. I also, if they're little shapes, which these ones are, they're little hearts, I also add an odd number in one area. So this area that I've just done, it will be three. Hello, Avon. <laughs> it's actually not Avon. I think it's the cat. But just give me a minute. Okay, so the cat's safely away. So we're going to add three of the hearts in one area. Because with what I was saying before about odd numbers being more aesthetically appealing, I'm not going to add them too close to the brow bone because we've got to do highlighting and stuff there in a minute. So you can see that I've just got like a little tiny cluster of hearts there. Now I'm going to grab up my glitter brush, my glitter glue brush again. And I think I'm just going to add some on the high side of my brow bone just here. Like where my eyebrow starts to descend, I think is the word for it. Again, I'm grabbing my little sponger. Sponger. Okay, I can't. The powers of speech have left me today. Wonderful. My smudger. And I'm just going to pick up another three. I just kind of like to put them in little groups. I just like the way that looks. Oh, we drop one. Okay. Okay. I'm just pressing them onto the glue. The good thing about this glue that I use is that um, pretty much straight away you can stick the glitter onto it because it already has tacked off because it's a cream. But I found sometimes with a lot of liquid ones that you kind of have to leave them to almost set for a couple minutes. Some people hate using glitter as part of their makeup. And that's just personal preference. But I'm obsessed with glitter so I have to have it. Moving on. So I'm just kind of creating a little area of glue here at the outer corner of my eye. I'm going to be careful where I place these ones because I've got to do eyeliner to flick up, which I'll probably end just there below those little hearts there. So I need to kind of be careful that I'm not introducing the glitter onto an area that's going to interfere with that. Probably would make sense to do the glitter after I'd done that, but you know what? It is what it is. We're just going to keep on. Oh, I thought I'd dropped that one, but it is there. Because these are like multi-reflective and iridescent, sometimes you can't see them until the light catches them. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the other eye, and then I'm going to get set up for the next step, and then I'll be back. Okay, guys, so we've got both eyes with glitter. Now we're, what we're going to do is we're going to add the under eye shadow. What I normally do is I repeat the colours that I've done on the eyelid and just use them to blend each other. Now today we've got like a purple smoky eye look. So the first colour that I'm going to place will be directly on the eye below the eyelid here and I've just realized doing that 
that I've forgotten to eyeline my inner waterline. So I'm just going to duck off and grab an eyelining pencil and then I'll be back in two seconds. Okay, so here we are again. Um, I've just grabbed a neon purple lining pencil because sometimes when I do really dark colours, I like to add a little bit of colour in that waterline. I just sometimes, like I want to do something different than black all the time. I've also grabbed a little powder puff. It just hooks onto your finger. And I use that to just pull down my eyelid because I don't want to make finger marks in this makeup here that I've done and set with powder underneath my eye. So basically I just rest the powder puff there and I'm just going to draw the eyeliner directly into this waterline here on my bottom eyelid. You usually have to rub it back and forward a couple of times because of that waterline that it can water off. Well, of course it can, Merrily. It's a waterline. Jeez. So you can kind of see a bit of that purple colour starting to appear in there. I just kind of rub it through the lower lashes as well. Okay, so this one too, probably can't see it very well, but it just becomes a part of the overall look, if you know what I mean. So I just do both eyes together, one after the other. Yep, that's pretty good. Now we're going to do eyeshadow. So, I've just got a very small, almost like what they would call a pencil brush. And I'm just going to dip into my darkest colour, which is a purple. Actually, it's not a purple. It's actually a navy blue. I'm getting ahead of myself. So I'm going to dip into that. And I'm tapping off the excess because we don't want excess eyeshadow dropping onto this makeup here. So I'm just rubbing the brush back and forwards through that lower lash line. And I'm kind of starting here at the tear duct and just rubbing it along. A little bit more. And now I'm just dabbing a little bit more colour in there so it's like nice and concentrated. So that's what we're after. So I'll just go ahead and do the other eye. Just rubbing it gently back and forward. Try not to do what I did just then. I put the brush in my eye. Oh, 5 out of 10 would not recommend. Because then you get all the eyeshadow powder in your eye. And that does not feel good. Okay, so again, just dabbing the colour along. Okay, now we're going to switch to a little bit bigger brush, a blending brush, a soft fluffy one. This time we're going to dip into the purple, like I was going to do before, and I'm just kind of like sweeping it across the dark blue colour that we've just put there just to soften it. I don't want to apply eyeshadow too far down into here because as you can see with the skin creasing there, 
if we put too much eyeshadow in there, it's going to cling and it's going to make everything look really like wrinkly and awful. So I'm just going to rub back and forward with my blending brush and my purple colour to soften that dark blue. That's good. I'm happy with that. Now up here on my eyelid, I used a really light pink transition shade just to lay down a base before I started applying the darker colours. So now I'm going to grab my big fluffy blending brush and I'm just going to dab into that light pink just to make sure that everything's nicely blended underneath this eye. We just want everything to look soft and velvety and because it's a smoky eye, smoky. How about that? Who knew? Anyway, so we're just going to do that. All right. So now I think what I'm going to do, and I'm a little bit scared by this prospect, so I think we should pray. Anyway, I think I might do the like baseline of my eyebrows just so I can get that like highlight in there and everything before I start applying eyelashes and stuff like that. So once again, I'm just going to go and grab a couple of things that I need and then I'll be right back. Okay, everybody, I've got what I need and I'm scared because <laughs> I'm scared that I'm going to stuff up my eyebrows on camera. But you know what? It is what it is. I'm, I make mistakes all the time. So, you know, we're just going to go for it. So I've got here like a flat eyeshadow brush. Ultimately, that's going to be for applying the highlight to the brow bone. I've just got like a, a flat blending brush because once we've got that baseline in for my eyebrows, we're going to sharpen up the line with some concealer. And this is just to blend that out. I've got a small angled liner brush. That's just to apply the concealer in a really sharp, nice line. Concealer. And I've got here a little eyebrow palette, which has got a couple of different colours in it that range from like a light coffee brown through to a chocolate and a very dark brown. I actually use all three colours because I like the eyebrow to be very dark here and then to progressively get lighter as it moves towards my nose. So there's that. Now, I'm just thinking, I think I've left behind my brow brush, so back in a minute. Okay, now we're back with the brow brush. This is just a soft angled brush. And I think it's one of the best angled brushes I've ever used. So again, if you would like to know what that brush is, just shoot me a comment. Now, I don't know if anyone's seen my eyebrow video before. You can check that out on my channel. Um, in that, I kind of go into eyebrow mapping and stuff like that. What I'm going to do is just a simplified version of that now because as you can see, I've kind of put the shape in before I started eyeshadow and now we're just going to build on that. So I've got my angled eyebrow brush. I'm not going to apply any product to this just yet. I'm just trying to figure out where the angles of my eyebrows are so that I can see where I want it to decline and where I want it to be at its highest point. Now how you do that is you actually place your brush at the side of your nose and you angle it so that it goes through the pupil and where it meets 
the eyebrow line I just do like a pale mark there that's where the eyebrow is going to hit its highest point and then start to decline back this way so once again I'm placing my brush beside my nose angling it through the pupil of my eye and I'm just making a small mark as you can see it's only a pale mark and once we finish off eyebrows I'll put concealer over there and stuff like that so you won't even see that eventually now I'm going to grab my darkest color to put in the baseline that's just my personal preference I like to start with the darkest color and then work my way up to the lightest color so where we've put like that marking I've got the brush angled so that um, the point is towards my nose I'm just going to start at that line that I've made and start to decline my eyebrow back towards my ear I just usually take it through to my hairline just because it creates a nice line and I can always put some concealer over that later so once again I'm just grabbing some dark powder and I've, I've turned it around so that that point is towards my nose so there's our mark that we've just made I'm just declining the line back towards my hairline doesn't matter if it's not sharp or precise because it's just our baseline and there and then we're going to sharpen it up with concealer so once again I'm grabbing my dark color and now I'm just starting here at the start of my eyebrow and I'm just creating the angle that the eyebrow will meet up with this highest point marking here doesn't matter if it's down the nose here because usually afterwards once I've sharpened up the lines with concealer I'll like fix that up with some contour and stuff like that so once again I'm just trying to make them so that the angles meet in the middle I forgot to say that so that's the angle that eyebrow will kind of go up in and now we're just going to join up the two and I'm just slightly curving it around just so that we've got that nice shape okay so that's our baseline now we're just going to join up this one I'll need a little bit more product the cats are killing each other in the lounge room isn't that fantastic okay so I've just made my first mistake there that line is not very good so I'll have to fix that up later I should probably do it in a mirror instead of just doing it in the camera because maybe I'd be able to see a bit better anyway so now I'm just going to grab my concealer I probably will need the mirror for this because this is like it needs to be a bit more precise let's put it that way so just got my concealer and I'm just kind of um, grabbing a little bit of product off the applicator but I don't want 
the brush too loaded up with concealer because I don't want it to create like a big blob that I have to finish, fix up later. <clears throat> now, once again, for points of reference, we're going to use that high point that we marked in earlier and we're going to start there and just make that line sharper that's okay I'm not mad at it Kudos to Jeffree Star at this point. Love you. Anyway, so as you can see, now that line's quite precise, I'm just using very short strokes just to make sure that line's really clear. Now I have to be careful here because we've got our little pieces of glitter. Okay. So that's where we're at. Now I'm just going to grab my flat blender and I'm just going to soften that concealer thank you Tegan for telling off those cats because they were starting to annoy me you did yep you just nearly ruined the flower oh did she yeah she better not so I've just softened that concealer because that's where we're going to put our brow highlight in a minute. So I'm just going to go do the other eye and I'll be back in two seconds. Okay guys, so sadly, while I was blending up here, I knocked off one of our little glitter pieces. So I had to just go and re-glue it. Anyway, it is what it is. Let's continue. So now we're going to place our highlighting colour on the brow bone. I usually like to use either a really reflective shimmery eyeshadow shade or you can actually use a highlighter itself. Now I'm just going to grab my flat eyeshadow brush. Hmm, what should we do? Okay, I've got this really nice pearly pink colour that I think would look good so I've just got the product on my brush and I'm just starting in here and I'm just smoothing it into that under brow area but I specifically want it concentrated in this curve here. So again, I'm just kind of patting it down this time. Again, concentrating on that under brow area. <clears throat> and I'm just going to load a little more product just into that curve. So that's what we've got. Now this side's going to be a little bit more difficult because I've just noticed that this one's more curved than this one. Anyway, no. so we're just going to line that along there. Tegan, come and get the spray bottle, mate. Is she being rude? She broke it. Show me a look. She broke a piece off. We've got a crisis happening here. 
put it on the table, honey, and that way she can't do it again. Here, hey, take that with you so that you can get her. Anyway, so we're just going to pat along here again. Once again, concentrating in that curve there. And like that. So, as you can see, there's a big lighter area and a darker area where the eyeshadow starts. So we're just going to grab our fluffy blender and our light, light pink colour that we used to transition shade. And we're just going to blend that highlighting brow cover into the rest of our eyeshadow. Just so it doesn't look like there's a big sharp demarcation line between the two. Because if you've watched my videos before, I talk a lot about blending and the fact that everything has to look soft. So we just don't want like a really light area and then all of a sudden a really dark area. That's what a transition shade is. It's meant to transition from one colour to another. So I'm just gently rubbing the colour in. I don't want to create any sharp lines. I just want like a blurred effect. And I don't want to lose that colour that I've just put up there. So I'm pretty happy with that. So once again, I'm just going to blend over here as well. Because I don't want this eye to be unblended. And the other one to be blended. Because that's not going to look good. Because they don't match. I think once again I've knocked off one of my glitter pieces, so I'll have to reapply that later. Or maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just leave it. I don't know. Anyway, doesn't matter. So just softly blending everything together. Okay. Now. Ah. Uh, I'm trying to decide whether to do eyelashes or not. You know what? I might just place the inner corner colour and then make eyelashes a video on its own because eyelashes are sometimes really hard. So I'm just going to grab a little brush and then I'll be back. Okay, so I've just got a little small brush. Yes, Tegan. That's okay, doll. Yeah, of course it does, because it's glitter. Anyway, so I've just got this small little round brush, and I usually use like a foil or a highly reflective metallic in the inner corner. You always use a light colour because you want that to open up there. And the one that I'm looking at, I've got like a, a hazelnut gold colour. So I'm just going to... You want it to be placed just here. So I just usually make like a circular motion. Because as you can see, it's loading onto the bottom lid and just in the corner of the top lid as well. And as you can see, it just kind of lightens up everything. Like that. So I just place a little more colour. In that area and I'm happy with that yep that's good so we're just going to go ahead and do the other eye just making a circle with the brush in that corner so that it loads onto both eyelids I like to just drag it down a little bit little bit more colour in there. Alright. And just a small amount just to make that corner really pop. 
Yep, that's better. Okay. And again, I'm just going to soften with my blending brush, but I'm not adding any extra color to it. I'm just softening. Okay. So that's pretty much it. That's all the finishing touches and stuff that I do to my eyeshadow. I know I said I was going to do eyeliner and stuff like that, but you know what? I've done other videos on that and you know what? This is all about the eyeshadow, really. So anyway, that's pretty much it. Obviously, I've got to go and do the rest of my face and my eyebrows and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so leave me a comment or if you're on my Facebook and you are in groups with Hayley Brown and I, you may see a photo of this finished look and the colour palette that I used. If not... You can go onto my Facebook and, and there are other photos there. Anyway, so next video I'm thinking maybe we'll do eyelashes that video because eyelashes kind of encompasses the eyeliner as well because I usually do my eyeliner after I've put my eyelashes on because it just kind of ties everything together. Anyway, so... This is the embellishments or glitter or, you know, enhancements. So, yeah, we'll see you in the next video.